And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're going to be explorers. Two of us. This is a two-player game. We're going to be going to all different places around the world, trying to get some cool artifacts to bring back for money. Uh, we may even try to get some investors involved. We're looking at a classic uh, game here that's just been reprinted. This is called Lost Cities with a new look. Check out this uh, nice new box here. It's two players. It's designed by Ryan and Kenitia. Uh, and this is being brought to us by Cosmos. Uh, and uh, it's two players. It takes about 30 minutes. It's a tactical card game. Let's take a look. It's one of my favorites. In Lost Cities, you're going to be going to uh, some of the different five locations here. You're going to be going on expeditions and trying to bring back artifacts uh, from there and actually making more money than you actually spent to get there. Each player is dealt eight cards face down that will be their hand. We have the board here, which are thought of as actually discard piles, and then we have a draw pile. Now, just to show you the different cards that are in the game is, of course, we went over the different expedition locations by color, yellow, blue, white, green, and red. For each one of those colors, um, you're going to have numbers from 2 through 10. And if we take a closer look, it's really cool because the further away you are with the smaller numbers, it almost tells a story as you get closer. You went through the wall, you walk through the wall, you go through there, and you come through there, you see through the wall, or you get this new opening, and you finally find the big treasure. And each of them tell like a little bit of a, a graphical story, if you will. Now they all have from two to ten each color. There's also three handshake cards, which are investment cards. We'll talk about what those do later, but essentially those are all the cards for each of the colors. So here's my eight cards that I was dealt. I would be holding these secret to myself. The other person can't see what these are. And I just kind of sorted them by color. I have a four and a handshake of yellow and so on and so forth. Now on your turn, it's very simple. You're going to play a card first and then you're going to pick up a card. It's that simple. Let's show you how it goes. So before I tell you where I'd like to play the card, it's good to know how the game actually works and how it scores. Now, so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be going to different places. And if I'm going to play a card, let's just say I played on my side of the board on yellow, because that's a yellow four. As soon as I play one card on a place, I have committed, I've spent the money to get me and my crew there, we've flown all the way around the world, and essentially think of it as saying, well, we've already spent $20,000 to get there. So as soon as I play one card, I'm committed, and now I know that I have to get at least 20 points of, of, um, of, of, of uh, archaeology dollars here in order to actually even just break even. And so I played a card here, and then I'm going to pick up, and in this case I'm just going to pick up one off the draw deck to add to my hand, and then it'll be the next player's turn. Now let's say they play a four down there of red. And then they pick up one off the draw deck. So let's say at this point this was my hand. Now again, when you play a card, you can either play it on your side as going to an expedition, or you can play it in sort of on the discard board. Now in this game, after you've played a card there, of course, as I mentioned, you've gone there, but also every card afterwards has to be greater than the number that's before it. So on my next turn, if I had a three, I could not play it here because it's less than this. So this card really does me no good right now, but I could play a six, for example. It doesn't have to be in consecutive order as long as it's larger than the card before. But remember, we're trying to get a total of 20 at least just to break even. So we really want more like 30 points on a specific uh, um, uh, location at once we've started to go there. But instead of playing that yellow six card, I had, let's say, a, yellow, a red two card, which doesn't do any good for this person because they've already committed to going to red and they've already played the four card, which means they cannot play a three or a two card on this for the rest of the game because they've already gone past it. Those numbers are smaller. So I can actually, instead of playing a card on my side of the board as going to a location, I can discard it here and it kind of holds there. And that would be my turn of discarding and then I'll pick up a draw pile. And this becomes very interesting because let's say the other player places a four white here because they don't think I'm going there. But little do they know, I actually have quite a few white cards that I haven't yet played yet. I've been kind of hiding them from them. And so when it's on my turn, I can actually one, uh, you know, one turn at a time start to go to this place. And, uh, and now when I play that, I can now, for my pickup, I can pick up off the top of any discard pile instead of the draw deck. So again, on your turn, you're playing a card either on your side at a location or onto one of the discard piles, and then you're picking up either from the top of any of these discard piles or from the draw deck. 
And so it's really interesting how you're trying to figure out what cards to hold, what cards to keep from your opponent, and what cards to, to play and how long you're gonna do it. Cause you can only hold eight cards. So a lot of times you'll have a bunch of cards and you'll have all these high numbers and you're trying to hold off for white, but then maybe a bunch of yellows come out that I'm already working on. Oh geez, what do I do? Do I throw some whites here and wait for it? It, it becomes a very interesting thing, even though it's a very simple game. Now this will continue back and forth, playing a card either on your side or in the, disc, or in the discard pile, and then picking up either from the discard pile or the drop pile until this deck completely runs out. And that's the end of the round. As soon as the last card uh, is picked up, the round is over. We would then score any place that we've actually gone to. Now remember, it costs 20 to go anywhere. Since we didn't go to red, it's nothing. It's just a wash, it's a zero. But let's look at blue first. Now I have a 10 and a four, so that's 14 points, but remember it costs 20. As soon as I put one card, it costs 20 to go there. And so we are actually minus six on this. This was a bad decision. I shouldn't have gone for blue, because it's, uh, oh sorry, it's, it's uh, 14, yes, yeah, so I have minus six points for blue. Now the handshake cards we talked about earlier, they are investment cards. They have to be played before any number. They cannot be played unless they are before any or all numbers and there's a total of three of them for each color. This one has all three of them, this just has one of them. Now what this means is that as soon as you play this card down, this indicates that A, obviously you're going to white, but B, you think you have a lot of white because you've got extra investors to, 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 to put you into this location. And so you're betting that you're really gonna do well on this. Now, so we have 10 and seven, that's 17. Again, we're three short of that magic number of 20 is what it costs to get there, so we're minus three. However, for every handshake, it's going to double that, essentially. So for this one, we have minus three, but you're gonna multiply it by two, three, or four, depending on whether you have one, two, or three of these cards. For example, we have minus three, because it's 17, three less than 20, and then we have a handshake which doubles that. So we have minus six for white. Now on green, we have 27 here. Now remember, it costs us 20 to get there, so we have 27. We subtract the 20 it got us, it took to get us there, we have seven points. And again, if we had no handshakes here, no investors, it would just be seven points. If we had one, it would be seven times two, which would be 14 points. If we had two of them, it would be seven times three, it would be 21 points, but we have all three, we went all in. So essentially it's seven times four, 28 points here for this one uh, section. Now here we have 44 points, um, and again, it costs us 20 to get there, so 44 minus 20 is 24 points, and we had investor, so we double that. So essentially we would have 48 points for this, but because we have at least eight cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we add another 20 points on top of that for this. Is, this would be a huge scoring thing here for yellow. And so after we've done each of those columns, we know what my total points are. This was positive, this was positive, these two are negative. We add all those up and that's my points for this round. We do that for the other player as well. When we're done, we, we mix all these cards back up, we shuffle the deck all up and we deal a completely new round again. We do this for a total of three total rounds. Whoever has the highest score at the end of the three rounds is the winner. All right, well there's Lost Cities. Well, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I love Lost Cities. How do you know that? Last September, I did a top 100 games of all time, and this game was in easily my top 30s. I think it was around the 26 mark. Of all the games of all time, I love it that much. Sure, it's a simple game, but there's a lot there. I love games that are easy to teach. I can draw people in that are not part of the hobby. You can give them two rules, play a card, pick up a card, that's it. But the amount of depth and the amount of playing off the opponent and the amount of decisions and tension that's there off of those two simple things you do on your turn is amazing. I love it when you have a game like this. It's my favorite type of game. Simple rule set, tough decision, lots of tension, feels different all the time. I love it. It's one of my favorite two player games. In fact, I love it so much that when I go traveling, my wife and I, she loves this game too, and she's not a gamer. We leave the board at home and we just wrap the cards up in like a, a, a Ziploc and we bring the cards in. Uh, we've been playing it at airports, we've been playing it on airplanes, uh, and so you can do it that way too. But I really love this game. Um, I, can't, I can't even recommend it high enough. If you, I know this game's been out of print for a while, but if you have not played this game yet and you like card games, you like little filler games, and you often play with two players, this is the biggest no-brainer ever. This game is great. It seems simple, but yet the tension of what card and the, the decisions of, okay, they're starting to lay down red. Come on, come on, I've got some high, so, some red cards. I need you to go a little higher so I can start dumping those off to the middle of the board. It's like, whew. 
or like you've got you know you've got a bunch of these investor cards and you're just waiting 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 boom and you throw them out and then you've got the whole game you're trying to rush to get that done and another thing i really love is that aspect of taking off the discard pile isn't just to get stuff you want because at the end of the game you can you can change the amount of time that's left in the game by drawing off the discard pile because the game ends when that discard when that when the draw pile as soon as that last card's taken up boom game's over so you can count how many cards are in there by the rules so you can see how many cards there are you can say, okay worst case there's 14 cards left worst case i've got seven turns left um do i have enough turns to get to start a new thing sometimes someone's been dumping a bunch of red cards in the between the both of you and no one's going for red and late in the game, you can make a move to start picking up those reds and picking up those reds and picking up those reds. And then sooner or later, you can start dropping some down and picking up more. And it's like, oh, can I get up to 20, at least up to 20? Can I at least break even? Can I make a big thing here before the game ends? And as you're picking these up off the discard pile, you're, you're making the game last twice as long towards the end because you're not going through the draw deck. It's an awesome thing that just, just develops of changing the game time. Someone's trying to rush it to end it soon and someone's trying to keep it long. So maybe it's both of you are trying to keep it long because you're trying to get stuff going. Maybe both of you are trying to rush the ending. Really interesting push and pull there with the timing of, of grabbing the discards. Again, for such a simple game, there's a lot of meat there. Granted, it's a light game, but it's very dense for the amount of two actions that you get. I love it. The only negative thing I can say about this new reprint, by the way, I've been dying for this reprint to come forever because I always thought that the old uh, box and stuff was so outdated, the box and the cards. And when I heard about this new box, I went, oh man, that's exactly, I've been dying for a reprint of Lost Cities to make it look cool and updated. Um, now the box is a little bit larger than, than, than the previous one there. It's a little bit wider, um, and, but I love the new box. What I was really hoping for is that they were gonna redo all the artwork too, and they didn't do it in this one. It's my only negative thing about this entire game is the new one has a great box, but the art is the same. The art on the cards and the board really matches exactly the style of this artwork, which is kind of like a, not a crayon, but sort of more of a, an artistic style. Well, this is more of a new age digital image. I was hoping they were gonna redo the art on the cards, on both sides of the cards and of the board, and they didn't, and I'm disappointed about that. But. Even being disappointed about that, I would still buy this uh, if I didn't have this copy anyway, just because the game is so awesome, even with the old, older, outdated sort of artwork. And it might not be outdated to some people. Some people might like that style of artwork. I just think to mix that style of artwork with the new box was a little odd. Uh, but the game's awesome and it's back in print. So who cares what it looks like, right? It's that good. Just buy it. That's Lost Cities. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.